We are live. What is going on with everybody? It is your boy Eric, aka Young God, coming to you live in the, in the Green Dungeon, giving it to you a real, real rugged. And um, I got somebody on the other line. I'm gonna let him introduce himself. Who we got? What's up, man? It's Caleb Giles, Bronx, New York. I mean, how you doing today, man? Cool, man. I'm a little got a couple of things in the fire right now, but cool, man. Just you know, yeah, just working it out. You wake up early, man. Have to, you know, it's not enough time in the day. I figured. Nigga said, let's do it at 11 o'clock. I was like, shit, well, I had to. <laughs> but nigga had looked at the phone, I was like, god damn, I gotta wake up. So, hey, man, I was, uh, I was, uh, I, I appreciate it because I definitely do get up more early than I do. I feel like, uh, you know, niggas like to sleep in. You know what I'm saying? Niggas is, niggas is like that. Are you a person that's like always been up early on the ground? Uh, shit. That kind of started like maybe two or three years ago because um, it's like after high school you know just uh, you gotta get up early just because I also live in the Bronx right so like all the business and stuff that I do is in Brooklyn which is like about an hour 90 minutes from, from where I live hmm. I need like at least three to four hours to myself to like work and like get my consciousness like in my body before I hit the road or whatever so um, I'm usually up like these days like 6.37 that's crazy because like you know people who's not from uh new york I always assume that like brooklyn and uh, the uh queens and just all the boroughs are like way more closer than they actually are i mean they're physically close like they're, they're only a few miles away but because of like the train like and like the it's, like how the train operates and whatnot it takes like you know 90 minutes for me to get from here to bed where all my friends live or like you know like to get to the Mets feel from where I live, it's like, you know, two hours and some change and shit, you know? Goodness gracious. And, and it's so common for everybody to, like, take a train or, like, take a cab out there. It's not like, like, you could, it could be like a nigga that got money but don't have a car just because, I guess, is it more convenient for y'all to take a train or, like? Yeah, I mean, absolutely. Like, the, the cost of living in New York is so high, you know, it's so expensive to live in New York. So, like, even Uber, like, Uber in every other state that I've been to is so cheap. You know, it costs a few dollars to get across town, but in New York, it costs like 20, 30 bucks, like, very, like, standard. Like, there's nothing, you can't really get too much lower than that on, on, a, on a regular day. Mm. So, the train's 275, and that's just like, you know, quick, you hop on in mass transit, you know, it goes everywhere, you know, it's just like, there's no excuse. And a car, yeah, cars are so expensive. In the park. Like, New York is kind of fucked up, bro. It's crazy. Have you ever, uh, have you traveled yet? Like, have you been other places throughout the, uh, the country? Yeah, I, I grew up all around the country. You know, I, I'm from New York, but like, like I was born in Michigan and I lived in uh, Tennessee for a minute and I lived in Ohio for a minute. And then I moved to New York when I was in, I was 10, I was in fifth grade. Uh, but yeah, I mean, and beyond that, I, you know, I've toured, uh, like a lot of the United States, um, these past few years, so I was in the West Coast, you know, all throughout the Midwest, and back out east. So I've seen a, a good portion of the U.S. You know, I'm grateful for that. So since you've seen so much of the U.S. and um, hey man, I'm kind of known for slandering New York a lot. I'm not a fan of New York, man. So yeah. from your perspective, that kind of being your home base, what is your take on New York? Is you being, I guess, like a almost like a native New Yorker? I mean, New York is just, I don't know, there, there are so many benefits and also, like, cons about living in New York. Um, a lot of it has to do with just, like, how you get conditioned, like, at least in my eyes, like, living in New York conditions you to live a certain kind of way, a certain kind of lifestyle. Like, cause I, I deal with people in my intimate circle who, uh, you know, are not from New York, who, who have such a different way of living. You know, and all my friends from New York who grew up here, we just, like, live differently, you feel me? So it's just, like, really, uh, I don't know, you kind of have to, like, you know, grow up quick, as people you know, often say. But just, like, the, the, your your attitude is different. The way you tr handle situations is different. The way you handle yourself, other folks, is just different. Because, like, the city is so, like, congested and it's so... Uh, it's a, it's a tough city to live in for real. I guess traveling now, like you uh, knowing how New York works, has there been like a culture shock of something that you've seen? You was like, wow, people do this? Because they never do this in New York. 
Yeah, I mean, I think culture shock. I get more like uh, landscape shock, if that's even a thing. Mm. Just because in New York, like, you don't see so much, it's like, you know, of anything else but buildings, right? Yeah. So, you know, I was in Denver, Colorado, like, what, like two years ago or one year ago, and you know, it was just a massive landscape, the mountains. I was in Wyoming. I was in Northern California, Vancouver, all these places, just like massive landscape. And just, uh, it just, yeah, it always never fails to blow me away. It's like, humble me, you know. Wyoming is crazy. I was just thinking about this last night. I was like, I, I didn't even know it was uh, black people in Wyoming. Let alone, I didn't even know it was humans in Wyoming. Like, I didn't even know niggas uh, traveled to go there. So, like, when yeah. I seen uh, Kanye out there, I was like, wow, it's, it's actually people out there. That's, that's crazy to me. Yeah, bro, Wyoming is a beautiful place. It's really um, quiet, really peaceful. It's, uh, I'm not sure, like, the demographic of black people who live out there. I mean, I'm sure it isn't a lot, but it's definitely, like, a nice, like, uh, you know, retreat, you know, if you, if you want to get quiet. That's fine, that's fine. Are you into, you seem like you're kind of into that, like, because you say you, you wake up early kind of to, to get to yourself and, you know, kind of... Uh, be at one with yourself before you get out and deal with people or whatnot. Are you like kind of a, a person that thrives off, not thrive, but you know, enjoys that, that space just to you where you can relax a lot? I think it's more about, I mean, yeah, definitely. It, it, I think it's, it's just more about like um, making sure my ducks are in a row. And I think that's more important to me than like relaxing before I have to interact with people. I'm trying to be the most prepared I can for any situation, right? So. You know, like if I pray or like I like, you know, journal or, or, you know what I'm saying? Like just like to come into myself. So I think, yeah, like it is important in in, uh, in a different way, just like constantly making sure I'm ready, like, you know. And that takes me a little while because I got to wake up. You know? hmm. Hey, man, I, uh, that's crazy. I talked to, or I used to talk to a lot of girls who uh, used to like journal or whatnot, and I never really got it. And I still don't get it. So, like, for you, what does that do for you? Man, my mom taught me, like, the real, like, power in, like, keeping a record of something. Mm. Like, uh, because when you keep a record, you know, you can always refer to your, like, archive that you wrote, that you have, like, like, you know, done for yourself. So, you, you know, you might be feeling away one day, you can just refer to a journal entry and say, oh, but actually, this is what I'm actually, or this is probably why, or, you know, just, and on top of that, it just helps you get shit out of your head, so you can leave, put it somewhere physical, so that way you can, like, just have more room for other shit, so, it's, I mean, it definitely is just, like, it's necessary, for, I think for, for me, but I definitely would encourage any, everybody to get a journal, just write in it daily, you know. Would you say music is also like that for you, since you're writing down lyrics and kind of getting thoughts off your head? Absolutely, absolutely, and, it, and uh, I think journaling helps me with my writing just because I, I can like refer to a feeling mm. and then like put that in lyrics. So like, you know what I'm saying? Like, because I treat the music like my journal. You know, I treat it like just like not daily entries. I try to write every day, but also just like trying to get a more full like emotional terrain in your lyrics takes like awareness. You know what I'm mm. saying? Just trying to be more aware of like the things that I'm feeling, make for better lyrics. I think. Are you like? Has that always been a thing? Like, just in life, not even in music. But have you been a person that was good with, I guess, expressing emotion the way you wanted to? Yeah, because I would just do it. You know, I think I would just like as a as a shorty, I used to just like wild out all the time, or like, which wasn't the most constructive way. I think, but I was like a badass little kid. I. I trouble in school and, and, and all you know all kinds of little shit but I think my mom made sure that my sisters and I had a good like emotional intelligence toolbox mm. that we might be able to really express how we're feeling without like feeling weird about her bad about her and so I think yeah like that's she really put me on to like how to, how to identify things how to identify what the real root of the issue is and like why behavior is the way it is it's, you know, that's I think what she told me the most like how to identify what you're feeling for. well man I think you do a good job at that I'm a big fan of your music man so 
stuff like that. I, uh, I honestly been trying to think while you're talking how I found your music, and I honestly cannot remember it. Like, I cannot remember exactly where I found it at. But when I found it, I was like, hey, man, I'm glad I found this. And, uh, yo, you, uh, you've been in your bag, man. Um, yeah, uh, you're just really good, bro. I feel like you do a lot of different, you try a lot of different things. And, uh, I feel like for the most part, you execute really well, man. Um, from your songs with Stand on the Corner, uh, you try, like, uh, I mean, they, they try a lot of different things on their own, just in general. Like, Stand on the Corner is, like, just, you know, just, um, experimental jazz, all type of crazy stuff, right? And <coughs> I feel like, for anybody who will work with somebody like that, or somebody who will work with a producer like Knowledge, or a producer like Madlib, you got to be open to different ideas. So I think that's cool to see that you're open to different ideas. Is that correct to assume that you're like open to different things? Yeah, because I mean, you never know. Like I, oftentimes, go into you know sessions or situations that you know it doesn't often make sense. Like traditionally, like I won't go in the studio all the time with like a, with like a, you know. Like a, a rap producer you can even like you can always get a slap out of something you know what I'm saying like whether it's just like a, a, a rhythm that you hear or like a melody that they play like you can always get a slap out of something so you just never know <laughs> but, yeah. now Wondering is crazy on uh, uh, Therapy Rain that's a, that's a crazy song to me like the way that uh, it's, it's the way that I, I, I like that the way like they're playing with their vocals or whatnot, and the way that you can fit over that star production that's not really, I feel like, an easy thing that a lot of rappers can do or whatnot. And even going back to a song like Blackberries, like, that song is hard to me. It sounds like a beat that I've been on a uh, Super Butterfly. And um, that's, like, one of my favorite albums of all time. And just to, like, hear that, um, yeah, man, I, I just think you make some really good music, bro. That's the, that's the moral of the story, man. Yeah, wondering was funny because <laughs> Jasper and I, Slauson Malone and I, we have been working on There Will Be Rain for, like, a, a few weeks at that point. And, uh, Jasper, he made this beat, and he sent it to me while I was in school. He's like, yo, come over after school. I'm like, all right. So I pull up, and we're talking about the song. I've written to it before I got there. And, like, it was kind of late. Like, we had been, like, drinking or whatever. And so, like, I, like, I, I so it was funny because he, I thought he was setting up, like, the session for us to record. I thought he was, like, going to set the mics up and shit. But he was playing his guitar. So I thought he was, like, I don't even know what I thought. But I, like, I fell asleep for a second. I thought it was, like, half an hour. And I woke up, I'm like, bro, like, what are you doing? Like, are, are we going to record this thing? Oh, I was waiting for you, bro. I was waiting for you. And I'm like, oh, okay. So he sets the mic up and shit. So my voice, the way it sounds, I had just woken up from this nap. And I started, I laid it down. And it sounded pretty good. And uh, that's, a, yeah, that's just a little bit funny. No, that's, I, I love the, like, backstories of music and whatnot. And um, like I said, I, I could tell that you have, like, a lot of, uh, a lot of cool things going on. And one thing that I realized, or specifically Under the Shade, I feel like on a couple songs, when you, uh, you know, you do the singing sometimes and whatnot, and I could be wrong, but it sounds very reminiscent of somebody like Mac Miller. So I didn't know if Mac Miller was somebody that you were a fan of, but... You know, I, I was, but it's so funny you say that, because you're the second person to tell me that. Really? That exact comparison. Nah, but he wasn't, he's not the inspiration for my singing. Uh, on the track, but uh, definitely was definitely a fan of Mac Miller's Hard Body, like you know, in 16, whatever, listening to Faces. And uh, my sister was hella into like his earlier stuff, like Blue Slide Park and all that. It was definitely, you know, a fan, I respected him a lot, you know. Who is the inspiration for your singing on those, on those songs on the other, the uh, under the shade? I mean, I'm not, I don't know, just like. You know, like, it's hard. I, I've been, what I've been doing, I've been taking voice lessons. So I've been trying mm. to, like, find my voice, like, my range. Like, I got that <clears> great. <throat> so, uh, Sil DeBinion, he's a great singer, saxophone player. He plays the thing on the corner. He's, like, the main sax player for them. And uh, so I've been taking lessons with him. And just, I think it's more so about me finding, like, my range. And, like, I like certain singers, you know. I like, like, Whitney. I like... You know, like the classics, you know, like uh, fucking Mariah Carey and all that, and Marvin Gaye, you know. But I think uh, <clears throat> I'm really influenced by one particular artist. It's more just like, how do I, how can I use my own voice for the best? Because it's, I don't, I don't have a whole lot of like, I do, but it's like, I'm learning my range and shit. I got like a tenor, 
and I got like a soprano. I'm trying to find the alto in there. So, yeah. Hey man, I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you something that I gotta look at the, the, the song name for I do this, but I'm gonna tell you something that I realized. So all the time, like when people sing, uh, there's a lot of niggas who suck. There's a lot of niggas who just can't sing and probably should never sing, right? But there's some people who can't sing, <clears throat> but they still find a way to make the song sound good just because I think it's them uh, not knowing they could sing, but using their raw emotion and I kind of guess uh, like just the power through vocals to make it sound really good. So, yeah. for example, this is like one of my favorite examples of this. Uh, J. Cole on For Your Eyes Only, he had an intro called For Whom the Bell Tolls. And that nigga cannot sing for nothing. Like, that nigga sounded like butt juice. But the way he was singing on there, that song gets stuck in my head so much because he sings with so much emotion and like just like a feeling. It's very raw. He did the same thing on David Letterman where he was, uh, he did the song about Trayvon Martin dying or whatever. And he can't sing, but you can feel it. So even though you're still trying to find your range or whatever, I don't know, man. If you uh, get inspired one day, if you could just go in the booth and just let it out raw, and you'd be like, "Damn, this is sound crazy." So yeah, no, I feel you. I, I agree. That's a great. That's a great example of somebody like Jake. That that record in particular. There's a lot of singing on that one. I think yeah, you're right. Yeah, that's a um, that's a great. Is there anything else that you like are trying to learn how to do? Like you're trying to learn how to sing, or you're trying to learn how to uh, do anything with your music that uh, you've been working on really hard lately, or is it really just singing right now? <clears throat> you know, I'm trying to learn how to like listen better, like mm. how to hear, how to hear, how to listen. Like uh, my dad's a musician, and he talks a lot about like how to hear music or, or how to hear like it's like certain you know like tones or, or how to like hear your own voice and like how to so you're so you're able to I don't know come into a more like focused space like instantly as opposed to like having to kind of like you know find it which, which is fine I think I'm just trying to like have, I'm trying to listen better to, to like my own voice and like to, to be trying to like just do a better job of like uh, just listening man yeah just listen better can you play an instrument <clears throat> yeah I play the piano the saxophone and the bass and I'm also I'm learning I'm trying to learn the guitar actually I'm trying to learn how to play the guitar that shit is kind of difficult but learning the guitar but yeah I play a couple of instruments just yeah just trying to get better every day man. and like just push myself every day which is a part of like waking up early like and exercising every day that's like it all coalesces man they all share boundaries so just when you push yourself in one area you push yourself you should be pushing yourself I mean kind of push yourself in all areas you know so consciously I interviewed uh, Pink Sifu the other day, <clears throat> and um, I said this to him, and I'm curious if you would agree, um, because he was talking about how he was in a marching band growing up, and I was telling him how I was in a symphonic band, and it was just completely different experiences, but we both know how to play instruments, and I feel like knowing how to play an instrument, it kind of just like opens up another piece of your brain when making music, like if you're rapping or if you're singing or whatnot, so you being a multi-instrumentalist, uh, do you feel like you kind of got another piece of your brain opened up knowing that you know how to play saxophone or the piano and learn how to play the guitar? Yeah, I mean, in short, like, yes. But I think, like, I've been, I, I teach piano lessons to, like, a couple, like, of people. And one, one person in particular, this little girl, she's, like, two years old. I've been teaching her the piano. But she don't really, she can't speak, bro. You know what I'm saying? She's a little two-year-old girl. So she does, she has, like, really uh, basic language skills like English language skills and what I've been doing is I've been writing like the name of the notes out and like spelling small words like B-A-G bag you know I've been teaching this hot cross buns with those three notes and I'm seeing how she recognizes like bags <coughs> in like real life like material bags and connects it with bag the words she's seeing on the screen mm -hmm. and then bag on the piano and I'm seeing her make these connections <laughs> And I feel like on a larger scale, like people who play music, uh, play instruments, they make similar kinds of connections. Like, uh, not this, like not like in that specific example, but just like, you know, you like you said, your brain like works a little faster, and it like 
makes different connections quicker because you you know you have some uh different kind of knowledge of like you know sound or language or, or whatever what have you wait a minute teaching a two-year-old how to play piano is insane uh that girl's probably gonna be a genius in the next couple of years she's starting to graduate high school at the age of like 12 that is that is crazy <laughs> yeah she's not smart yeah that, that's that's crazy i like uh it's always like a uh, little Asian kids to be playing like the violin at five. I'm like nigga, like right. how yeah. do you? Who taught you this? This is ridiculous. Yeah. So yeah, that's 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 crazy stuff right there. And um, I'll be crazy if I don't mention this because uh, talking about New York, New York is like a hot spot for the underground talent right now. People like you, people like uh, Mike and like Madani, all of the sons people and whatnot. And it is very crazy how y'all are breaking through just like so quickly. And I feel like. It's resonating with people, and I was saying this the other day in the Pink Sleeve interview. I feel like when you make music and people can relate to it, it's nothing that can stop that. Like if people can relate to the music, it's, it's no one uh, entity or record label that's going to stop it. Because if niggas feel it, niggas feel it. You know what I'm saying? So I feel like y'all got something really powerful going on right now, bro. Yeah, I mean, I'm. It's funny you say, you know, quickly, but you know, we didn't, we didn't put in some years for this. Bro. Of course, like, of course, I, of course. And like things are moving for sure, but like it's, it's funny because just like bro, it, it, like Madonna's been putting out music since like when, like uh, like 2013 maybe I think, or like and myself 2016, we all linked up like way back, and now things are really moving for sure. But it definitely, good things take time. So all I can really say to that. You know, good things take time. And good things will always overpower and outlast things that have no, you know, uh, like, you know, real real intrinsic value. I mean, everything has intrinsic value, sure. But not everything is, like, you know, like, relevant or remains relevant or, like, is, like, you know, bears fruit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, I think, yeah, it's just it's a matter of, like, I don't know, niggas are just niggas need this like like we need it and like it looks it seems as if other people enjoy, like enjoy it and like really resonate with what people who are saying you know that's right niggas are definitely um, like I said if it's relatable man niggas is gonna rock with it either way so hey that's that's, that's a big pack right there um I don't wanna keep it for too long so if you got anything else you gotta say before we get out of here man uh you know bro February 18th actually hold on I don't even know if he Oh, fuck that date, but I just said. <laughs> Nigga, Madani about to drop a tape very soon. Full circle. Go fuck with that. I just put a video out. Go fuck with that. I'm about to put another song out very soon in a couple of days, hopefully. Fuck with that. Uh, I, just quickly, I quickly want to let you know that that, that date is public knowledge, by the way. Oh, okay, okay. Cool. <laughs> it's always cool. It's cool. Right, okay. Yeah, I'm dropping the tape this year. So, yeah, man, things are just looking good. Hey, man. When, when, when did you, when did you drop Under the Shade? Like, I know you dropped it last year, but, like, when did you drop it? July 24th. July 24th. Okay, so, I, like I said, I came a little bit later when you yeah. dropped it or whatever, so I didn't really know what day to drop it, July 24th. Yeah. Interesting. You got, like, a time frame when you're trying to drop a new one? Yeah, but I can't tell you. Mm. <laughs> oh, hey, man. But, yeah, I got an idea. All right, man. Well, uh, are you done with it? How, how far are you? Uh... I'm getting there, you know. It's yeah. maybe, like, 45% of the way there. Feels good though. Feels really good. Hey man, well, uh, I want to thank you. I want to thank everybody just in this scene right now who's making music because uh, it resonates with me heavy. You know what I'm saying? People like you, people like uh, Sage, Blue Navy, um, all of y'all. It's crazy to me. Just listen to music and I'm like, wow, like it's this is like super duper black. Like it, it this is like um, what's the movie? The um. I forget the movie. Hey, like you said, that date, that date is irrelevant. That movie's irrelevant. Who cares? I can't even think of the movie name right now. But yeah, moral of the story is, uh, I'm I'm all for blackness and uh, authentic blackness. Not like I'm trying to get retweets and saying some black thing that I don't even really believe. I'm all for genuine blackness. So thank you for the music that you make, and you know everybody else in that circle, man. Yeah, man. Thank you for tapping. Yeah, definitely go <laughs> go go buy uh, Navy Blues new tape. It's really hard. <laughs> Crazy, crazy, it's crazy. Yeah. It's just beautiful. I don't know how he's doing that. I don't know how he's making the music he's making. I don't know what uh, slave ancestors he done tapped in with, but goodness gracious, man. It's crazy. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. It's crazy, but 
for everybody watching right now, I appreciate it. Until next time, I say what I mean. I mean what I say. Haters gonna hate. Players gonna play. I'll let you boy.